Hi, my name is Jim Berg. I'm the Executive Director of Freedom That Lasts. And I want to welcome you to this video presentation, which is filmed in Lighthouse Baptist Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This church is the home office of Freedom That Lasts in Canada. And I trust you'll enjoy this video presentation and that it will help you in your Christian life. For us to know what pleases God the most is because of the work that God's doing in us. <laughs> so God has justified us in Christ for righteous acts that he wants us to do so that he is not only pleased, but that he is glorified. Then we uh, looked at uh, the sanctif sanctification through the process of the Holy Spirit. We were once slaves to unrighteousness, and then we become slaves to righteousness. That is the process that you and I are going to go through for as long as we live on the planet. God, as we learn more about Jesus, as we are more obedient to the Word of God, God progressively sanctifies our character to be more like Jesus. And that was such a good topic for us to go through and to understand. The last topic that I want us to look at is... This, and it's through the sanctification process. Again, the sanctification process is what sets us apart by God, made holy for Him, so that we can serve Him. So it's not all about us having a comfort life, it's all about Him having our life so that He is recognized by others. To know, wow, you don't act like you used to act like. Because God's doing the work in me. He is sanctifying me. So what I want to do is going to take us uh, probably two Fridays to go through this. Uh, I know the scripture is there in Galatians 5. Uh, the topic that we're going to look at now is the battle with our flesh and God's spirit that's within us. So you and I are in a battle. The only way that you and I are going to be able to be victorious in the battle of our flesh and the spirit that's within us is when we submit to God the Father. What uh, Scripture is going to tell us, if we walk in the spirit, then we will not fulfill the desires of our flesh. That's, that one statement is a hard thing for us to grasp. Because there are some things in your life right now, tonight, where you think, it's going to be impossible for me to have victory over this sin. It controls me. But we're going to look at the scriptures tonight. What gives us the victory is walking with the Spirit. Because it's the Spirit that overcomes our sin. We're not strong enough to overcome our sin. We're not wise enough to outsmart our sin. We don't have enough willpower to overpower sin. And the amazing thing is, Jesus has conquered all sin. So if you and I learn how to follow Jesus, he will never lead us to sin. And if we are in sin right now, and we start following Jesus more consistently, what is he going to lead us away from? From sin. <laughs> so if I'm struggling with sin, I need to learn how to walk closer to Jesus, because he's going to pull me away from that sin. Because he has already given us victory over it. We no longer have to struggle with that sin. Because we are in Christ. The Christian life can be... Actually, the Christian life is simple, but we like to make it complicated. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The Christian life, there is freedom in Jesus Christ. That is complete freedom. Yeah. But we like to complicate it. 
Oh, well, nobody struggles like I do. No. No, Jesus was strong enough to help that person, but whoa, whoa, but, but they don't understand how, how bad I have to struggle. Yeah. Hold it, hold, hold, hold. Yeah. If, if victory gave that person, sorry, if Jesus gave victory for that person, when that person decided to follow Jesus, then who's the victor? Jesus. Jesus. Right. It's not us. So let's go to Galatians uh, chapter 5. I just want to read this, and then I want us to just get an overview of it. And then I have a scripture that God's put on my heart to help us to fulfill this obedience that we need to do in Galatians 5. And so reading in verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse 16. And let's read right down to verse 26. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, but the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to give you, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So the scripture is telling us if we are in Jesus Christ, we have the ability to overcome the sins in our lives and not only the abilities to not do the wrong things, but the abilities to do the spiritual right things things. Left to ourselves, we can do all the wrong things ourselves, can't we? But without Jesus, we can't do anything that is going to be honoring and pleasing to the Father. So what do we need to learn how to do? We need to learn to walk by the Spirit. Not to walk by ourselves. Or not to walk with our really good what we would say, godly friends. Our, our reliance on moving forward in the Christian life needs to be the Holy Spirit. If somebody were to ask you, who is your closest spiritual friend? You know who it shouldn't be? Oh, my pastor. Oh, yeah, he's my real, he's my closest spiritual friend. Okay, pastors should be good spiritual friends, but they shouldn't be your closest. <gasps> oh, my spouse is so godly. Oh, you know what? My closest spiritual friend is my spouse. Yeah, that's great to have a godly spouse, but they shouldn't be your closest spiritual friend. 
when you get older and your children have been saved and they're growing in the spirit and they're just they're getting wisdom and and it's like wow man they're really growing and maturing spiritually your best friend shouldn't be oh my daughter or my son is my closest spiritual friend I think it's great to have godly children but the one person that should be your closest spiritual friend my closest spiritual friend is the one in whom God has placed within us the Holy Spirit of God the Holy Spirit of God knows exactly what you and I are struggling with tonight. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what you're going to struggle with next month. You just need to learn how to have this relationship with this person that you can't see. Where is the place that we would go to to get a visual or to understand the Holy Spirit a bit more? Church. This is the most and first source that we would go to. Man, I need to understand the Holy Spirit. His purposes, His ways, and the purpose that God has for Him to be involved. Then, the other thing is to find a good, godly, closely Christian friend that is continually filled with the Spirit. You see them in struggles and situations in their lives, but it doesn't tear them down. It actually builds them up. Because they say, I am weak, but he is strong. I am a doll of understanding, but he is wise. Mm -hmm. If you and I can learn how do we become more of a friend to the Holy Spirit that God has placed within me. That's what I want us to, to learn and understand in this text. We're going to be diving more into this next time we're together. Why do we want to walk by the Spirit? Because we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Why will we not desire to gratify the flesh? What does God have to do for us not to desire to satisfy the flesh? He needs to change our desire. <laughs> he needs to turn us away from something that's satisfying to our flesh and is going to start feeding the Spirit that's within us. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't need strengthening, does it? But what happens when we give more of the control, or we can say the rule of our life, to the Holy Spirit? Does He become stronger, or are we just more aware of His strength that's in us? <laughs> yeah, we are more aware of His strength that's already there. <laughs> we, we have access, we could say it this way, we have access to God to overcome our struggles. What things are too much for God? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> what things can God not solve? What problem? Nothing. All He has is solutions. So what we need to learn how to do, God has placed His Holy Spirit in us to change our desires. Okay, so then how, how, oh, I really want to know, how can I change my desires? Guess what? We can't do it. It's not our job to change our desires. It's the Holy Spirit's job. Okay, Pastor, I, I know that. Okay, I, I, get, I get this. It's not about me. It's about the Holy Spirit. But how do I allow the Holy Spirit to rule me? Yeah, how, how does he how does he end up taking control? Is it a mystical thing? Is it this this second blessing that is this jolt from the sky that has to hit me so that all of a sudden, woohoo, I'm on this ride with the Holy Spirit? 
Spirit. No. What we need to learn how to do is to do the exact same thing that Peter was told by Jesus that he needs to do. You know what that is? Take your Bibles and go to John. John chapter 21. This is the scripture that I wanted to kind of look at tonight, just to finish off tonight before we dive into the text next week. So we're looking at what? John 1? John 21, chapter 21. Okay. Uh, starting in verse 15. Peter, Peter, Peter. Did he see some pretty miraculous things? Yeah, I so. Did he see the power of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Did he even see the resurrected body of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. So then when he can't see Jesus, what's his default setting? Well, I was a fisherman before, and I'm going to be a fisherman again, I guess. I'm going to go fishing. <laughs> Jesus says you no longer are a fisherman of fish. You're going to be a fisherman of men. But when it came down to the crunch, Peter caved in. And he's known to cave in, doesn't he? <laughs> doesn't he remind you of you and me? We, we're, we, we talk so strong. <laughs> and then when it comes down to it, we're just so weak. So here... Peter, Jesus, he can't see Jesus anymore. Jesus gave him instruction. You're, you're, you're to go and wait for me. I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up. Well, he doesn't show up, doesn't show up, doesn't show up. Peter says, okay, I'm taking control here. I'm going back fishing. And of course, he influences others. So all the other fishermen, as the apostles, said, well, hey, I'm going to join you. Let's, let's go do fishing. For those of us that know that story, how great did they do in fishing? Not. <laughs> <laughs> they got skunked, they say, in fishing. I, I mean, these are professional fishermen. And they have nets. It's not just throwing a little cast out there. They have nets, and they're trying to catch fish. Well, guess what? They can't catch nothing. But then all of a sudden, they didn't even know it was Jesus that was on the shore. But Jesus says... Hey, throw it on the other side. Now, logically, do you think they probably did throw it on the other side already? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't say it in the text, but they're professional fishermen. Of course they're going to try both sides of the boat. Or even if they did one side and they went around the, the shore, it would be on both sides, right, of the boat if they kind of went around in a circle. But Jesus says, just throw it on the other side. What happens? They catch so much, they can't even pull it in. Yeah. <laughs> and what does Peter do? Does he help try to pull in the fish? No, no he jumps right out of the boat. <laughs> he's, whew, he's just sporadic, isn't he? But he reminds us of us, doesn't he? So, so what's the key thing that Jesus wants to teach Peter? Let's read in verse 15. <clears throat> when, they had, when they had finished breakfast, it was nice of Jesus to put breakfast for them. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, I, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend to my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. 
Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, so Jesus said to him, follow me. In order for you and I to walk in the Spirit, we need to learn how to love Jesus more. The more you love Jesus and His ways, the closer you will follow Jesus, what will you start loving less? Yourself. Ourselves and the world and, the world and our flesh and sin. What you and I need to learn how to kindle, what you and I need to learn how to seek, you know, the only ones that seek after God are His children. Romans tells us there is none that seek after God. No, not one. So the only ones, the only people that seek after God are His children. But as you and I seek after God, as you and I seek after Jesus, we're going to fall more and more in love with Jesus. When we fall more in love with Jesus, it's going to propel us to walk more and more with the Spirit. Why do you think the more we love Jesus, the easier it's going to be for us to walk with the Spirit? Who is the Spirit and who is Jesus? God. They're the same person. When Jesus was resurrected and he went to the right hand side of the Father, he prayed and asked God to send another comforter, comforter just like him. If you and I learn how to follow Jesus, we're learning how to walk with the Spirit. If you and I learn how to love Jesus, we're going to learn how to love Jesus to walk with the Spirit. Because the Spirit and Jesus are one with the Father. I think this is what you and I need to learn in this series of how do we live a set-apart life unto Christ. So next time we gather together, I want us to go deeper into these two texts. Because these two texts, I think, are such good parallels to the truth about learning how to walk in the Spirit. Because what does the Scripture tell us? If we learn to walk in the Spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. You want God to help you to stop doing wrong things? need to walk with Him. Because it's Him that will lead us in the right direction and away from the sin that so easily besets us. Snares us. Kills us spiritually. We need to learn this. I pray that, and I have been praying, that you and I will be good examples of walking with Jesus. And, and you know in John how Jesus says, if you love me, what will you do? You will feed my lambs, you will tend my sheep, you will feed my sheep, and you will follow me. The more you and I walk in the Spirit, the more our life is going to be about other people's lives. One of our problems that we have is we think too much about ourselves. 
we're too inward focused. When we are inward focused, we're not walking in the Spirit. Because when we walk in the Spirit, we care more about others. And we care most about following Jesus. Which Peter, did Peter get this? After this, did, did God use Peter in a spectacular, miraculous way? Yeah. Because he was following Jesus and he was walking in the Spirit. And that is how God wants to use you to the next stranger that walks through these doors who needs Jesus. They don't just need to hear it coming out of our mouths. So they need to see us walking with Jesus. So if you want to help yourself, walk with Jesus. If you want to help others, invite others to walk with you as you walk with Jesus. This teaching isn't just about tonight. This teaching is your future and it's my future because it's about Jesus. Let's pray. Father, you have spoken to us tonight in the fellowship that we've had together, the prayer time that we've had together, the testimony time, talking about you and giving you praise and asking for prayer for you to intervene in our lives or in other people's lives in salvation or health issues or different circumstances. Father, thank you for tonight. We needed this. Father, we need more of you, less of ourselves. So please, help us to meditate on these scriptures for the next two weeks. And help us to have an insight to the truth and the guidance that you want to give to us and show us how to walk in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. I want to invite you to check out two of our websites. First of all, the main website for Freedom That Lasts, www.freedomthatlasts.com. And then also here in Canada, check out the website for Lighthouse Baptist Church, which is www.lighthousebaptist.ca. Thank you and let us know if we can help you.